All that changes, begins to change by the 1960s. And really leading up to the present, a period that I'm lab labeling simply multinational capitalism. What has gone on since the 1960s? Well, we're still trying to figure it out. But the, uh, it's a period during which companies go international. They go beyond their boundaries. From the point of view of enlightened self-interest, these persons not only grew big, but they somehow crossed the boundary of the nation state and began to, to um, render ambiguous the whole idea of the maximization of self-interest as a morally acceptable way of being. Because now we have persons who live between nation states. The first and most prominent was IBM, who with the IBM 360 computer developed and institutionalized a world market. From the point of view of the United States, this was a wonderful thing. American companies have found, are beginning to find worldwide markets. My goodness, uh, what a new opportunity. From the point of view of then primarily European countries, this was an, a, an issue of great concern. Was IBM a, uh, an arm of the US military, of the US government? Was IBM through computers going to become a vehicle for the takeover and control of European countries? European countries were frightened to death about the expansion of IBM and sales of IBM 360 mainframes in their, their countries. And so a number, especially France, for example, developed nationalized national computer companies. The IBM system, the IBM marketing system, gets replicated. And what happens over a longer term is that the, the, the rich countries, the countries, the uh, basically Euro-American companies, uh, have economies that begin to shift. Shifting from basic manufacturing, basic manufacturing, which is what characterized the period well, throughout American history, but that especially period of the 20s to the 60s, basic manufacturing begins to move into other countries in search, basically, of, of unskilled labor that would be relatively inexpensive. While the rich countries shift to service economies, knowledge-based economies, Indeed, you find in education today, the main struggle is to shift away from, uh, is, is, to, is to produce workers for information economies, knowledge-based economies, rather than for basic manufacturing. Markets for these persons called corporations, multinational corporations that are living across national boundaries become global and highly diversified. So you find companies uh, um, moving beyond the, the, the Fordist period where e the concept of economies of scale meant that you were able to produce product products more cheaply because you, you were producing them for wider markets into economies of scope whereby companies were producing uh, all of the different or controlling all different dimensions of the production system from the raw materials on through to production and distribution, and they're constantly searching for new markets. To the point at which we find today some companies live like General Electric, uh, its major goal in life is to acquire other companies. You find capital moving freely, more freely around the world, um, given the tax receipts are calculated on the basis of, or taxes are calculated on the basis of uh, end of day receipts in a lot of countries. It's become uh, a good strategy for, for multinationals to, to, using, to use electronic transfer of funds to move capital around from one division to another to, to minimize tax receipts. Indeed, probably trillions of dollars are circulating the globe as we speak, moving from one time zone to another as a strategy for living inside and outside of countries at the same time. The Fordist model erodes as labor loses negotiating power relative to companies that, are, that can move from one country to another. And indeed, governments lose negotiating power. What constitutes a relationship between a government and a company has become ambiguous. 
it is no longer possible to assert unambiguously that what is good for General Motors may be good for the United States because General Motors lives in lots of different countries. So, in a world of multinationals, and I basically picture the world today as a globe with a set of nation states on it over with an overlay of multinational corporations that live both inside and outside of countries, what constitutes industrial development is now ambiguous, unclear, and what constitutes global organizations becomes unclear. How engineering uh, disciplines will continue to develop and emerge in the midst of multinational corporations and multinational relationships is now a very real question. Let us take a look at the history of mechanical engineering. As I've indicated, the mechanical engineer does